Hello again everyone, it's me Johnny. I want to thank you for checking out my channel. And today I want to talk to you about living life in the rear view mirror. This is something I had to learn, how to tackle early on on my road to recovery. It was an easy step-by-step -step process. And tonight I want to teach more of an illustrated message and on this video and hopefully help somebody out that's going through it. So you can make much more advance, advancements and improvements on your road to recovery. And this is critical, um, something I've really learned and continually have to focus on. Living life in the rear view mirror. And this is just a standard rear view mirror that we use when we're driving an automobile, in most cases. And I want to say when we're driving and we're focusing the front, what's in front of us, looking through our windshield, we're focusing on our destination, we're focusing on our future. We're focusing on where we want to attain. You know, I can use it as running the race in life, your own race in life, choosing your own destiny. Okay? When you're driving a car and you're looking through the front, win front windshield, you're focused on where you're going to. You're focused on your destiny. And I want to equate that to concentrating and focusing on your goals. And what I teach is don't focus on the cancer. It's been there for a while. Focus on how your body heals. Focus on you. Focus on learning to love yourself. Okay? Now, you can have good memories and bad memories. And those memories can stay there either way. And you can meditate on either one. But what I've learned is, when I focus on the rear view mirror, all right, it's that uh, I focus on my past. When I look into my rear view mirror, I'm looking at the past, okay? And there's really nothing behind me but a wall. But when I look through the rear view mirror in life, okay, I'm going to equate it to I'm looking at my past. When I'm driving my car, I'm looking what's behind me. Not focusing on what's in front of me. All right, focusing what's on behind me. The same way, if I have toxic thoughts, toxic relationships in my life, and I start to focus on it, okay, and I start to meditate on it, and they become much more alive in me. Now I'm meditating and I'm focusing on it, and I'm not focused on where I'm going, because I'm constantly reliving my life in the rearview mirror, and there's nothing behind me, but the past. The only place. Uh, those memories are alive at is in your mind, in your heart. Because there's nothing behind me. They live here. They live here. They live in your gut. And I always teach that there's a super highway that connects us constantly, constantly. So when I'm focused and living in the rearview mirror, I can't see my future. I can't see the blessings. I can't see my destiny. I can't see my goals. can't see things I want to obtain because I'm stuck in the rearview mirror living my life over and over again, focusing on my past, focusing on her pains, focusing, you know, on times that aren't even alive, but yet in my mind, yet in my heart. And so when you start to meditate and become consumed 24-7, 365 days, you can't sleep right. Why? Because you're living life in the rearview mirror of pain and hurt. You suppress the immune system. Then you make bad choices, okay? And you can have everything going for you, but you'll only go so far because you continue through your choices to live in the past. And some of those memories can be so toxic that they're alive. Some of them can give you taste, uh, scent, smell, whatever it is, because they're so alive and pure in the mind. That's the only place they live at. There's nothing in the past. No one knows your past really but you. And you can give life to it. And you can water it over and over. When I choose to meditate on that, over and over, I'm giving it life. And it's only here that it's alive. And it could be hurt. It could be pain. But as soon as we choose to meditate on it and not deal with it, and the way dealing with it is it takes time to recover. This is one thing that I had to do when I got my diagnosis. I had to learn that. I did it to myself and accept the fact that I did it to myself by my lifestyle, by the choices that I made, how I continued to live in the past, past hurts, past relationships, and they're all toxic relationships. It's like one endless cycle of toxic relationships. The people I hung out with, uh, the people who said they cared or loved me, loved me from, said they loved me from their lips, but they never really showed it. Some people would hang, just hang out with you just to make themselves feel better. I've been through all that. And one of the things I had to learn is not to live in the rear view mirror. Not to focus on my past. Because when I focus on my past, I can't see what's in front of me. I can't see the people that truly love me. 
of people that really want to help that came into my life and helped me heal because it's a team that really helped me heal. I was fortunate enough to come across some compassionate doctors. They really cared about me. I mean, you know, I'm going to water up, but um, they continue to tell me to just to go on, just to keep on doing what you're doing, you know, educating people, teaching people. You know, there was a doctor that I met, a retired doctor, that took their time to start teaching me about physiology and biology on how the body works. I had that person 24 seven. I could sit down and talk with them. And the more knowledge I became, not only knowledgeable I became in it, I had to act on the knowledge, not just talk about it. I had to do the work and pick up the books to let my body heal. You know, and I tell people, people want me to coach them sometimes. They ask if I do coaching. One day I will, it's different. One day I'm gonna talk about the type of coaching I wanna do, but I will, I will do that. But right now, like I said, if you really wanted me to coach you right now, you'll love me, you'll hate, you'll, you'll, you'll hate me during the process, but you're going to learn to love yourself. Because during the process, with all the hurt and the pain, dealing with the cancer diagnosis, heart disease, whatever it is, somewhere there's a disconnect. And I believe healing is spirit, soul, and body. It's just not one facet. It's just not drinking juices. It's just not taking supplements. You have to deal with self. And the hardest person that you're going to have to deal with is self and all the negative talk, talk that's going on in your mind over and over again that's been seated there. And it's like the more you meditate on it, the more life you give to it, the more it becomes alive in your mind. And that's the only place it's alive. It's here, here in your gut. And one affects the other. It's like a super highway. All right. So, you know, you have toxic thoughts here. It bounces to the heart, can make it go faster. The way you react, now it affects your gut. All right. Now you sit up there with this thing going over and over again to where you can't sleep, you can't eat right. They put you on medications to help you. No. Those things are all toxic. It's only a band-aid. You've got to deal with the real you I found out during my diagnosis. And I had to dig into to me and be brutally honest with self. Forget about everybody else. Forget about what people think about me. Forget about what they're saying about me. It really didn't matter. To pull it off and to go to do a 180 and go the other way I had to learn to stop living in the, in the rearview mirror. That the only thing that was alive in my mind is what I gave it life to. And that's by living it over and over again, the pain, the rejection. I'm no different than anybody else. It's just the things that I've learned on my road to recovery. And, and it's still a, that's why I tell people it's still a healing process. You know, it's still a healing process because I think mine was more emotional. Besides that, one thing affected everything else in that circle of life. It just wasn't one thing. And that's why I continue, continue to make strides, continue to learn, continue to better myself. That way I can help the next person who's coming through who just got diagnosed. Maybe through these videos, they'll learn that, oh, I got to deal with this. Because true healing is spirit, soul, and body. I can come over your house, make all the juices, have you take all the supplements. We can go exercise. But if you're not dealing here, not dealing with the past relationships that are still alive, and if you continue to have function, dysfunctional, 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 it's all tied up to living life in the rear view mirror where you're stuck there. And you have the power to pull yourself out. And for me, my thing is a good book where it says meditate upon my word day and night. All right, that book is life. You know, the renewing of the mind, how to renew your mind. It's all in there. It tells you to meditate on the book. When that, when that scripture was written, written, they didn't have the rest of the Bible, they just had five books. It was known as the Torah. That's all they had, the instruction manual of the universe. That's the book of life. All right? And for those, you know, find out whatever you're into, you're into the universe, you want to study that, Buddhism, it really doesn't matter. You have to start here. To me, it doesn't matter. Some other people would. To me, it doesn't. I'll still hang out with you. I'll still love on you. I'm beyond that. I'm beyond skin color. I'm beyond your preferences or whatever you're into. I want to teach you how to live and live a life. Live the abundant life that's already in here. You just have to unlock it. But you can't do it if you mirror getting stuck there. And the only one that can get you out of there is you. And that comes through daily affirmations. That comes through changing your diet. That comes through learning and educating yourself. Getting the negative talk, talk out of your mind. Get rid of it. Because that's not truly who you are. You're born to be abundant. You're born to be a creator. You're born to thrive in life. There's something that you're called to do that no one else can do in this universe. Only you can do it the way you can do it and put your little flavor on it. People, you know, like I say in other videos, I can be a miserable, 
LeBron James, but I make a perfect Johnny Ramos. There's only one of me in the universe. In the history of the world, there's only one of me and there's only one of you. You weren't born to be a clone. You're born to be uh, one single uh, person with your own identity, your own fingerprint, your own eye print, your own DNA. No one else in the history of the world or the universe is just like you. And I just, I'm gonna end it here and I just wanna thank you for paying attention and listening to my video. And remember, don't live here in the rear view mirror where you're focusing on it 24 seven. And it's come, get rid of it by talking to yourself, positive affirmations, learning to love yourself, making dietary choices, and dealing with you. The most important person you have to deal with in this lifetime is yourself. What's that like? What's that conversation like in your head and in your heart? Out of the abundance of the heart, fill in the blank. Are you dealing with you or are you worried about somebody else's problem? Are you constantly being dumped on by friends? Those are toxic relationships. Get away from those people because they suppress the immune system with doubt, 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 and unbelief. Your vision is your vision. Nobody can fulfill your vision but you and all the tools are locked with inside you but you'll never obtain it by looking in the rear view mirror. You got to stop looking in the rear, rear view mirror and learn how to focus on what's in front of you on the promises through faith, looking and driving through that goal, that perseverance that continues to strive. I could have gave up a couple years ago in life for what they were telling me. I chose not to. And that's why I'm still in the healing process. Still going, still going, still learning how to live, still learning how to love me. And I want to thank you once again for listening to this video. I hope it helps you. God bless you. And remember, you're alive, but you're really living the life that you want to live. It's up to you. Take care. God bless.